you stop at this Hi, we're now? in Georgia. Huh? On our way to Tennessee for a happy day. Grab him, look at uh, Josiah. All right, we're at the Florida, Georgia, no, not Florida, Georgia Welcome Center. Center. Welcome Center. Nothing. Welcome. Oh, there's a sign. Oh, there's a sign. Welcome to Georgia. There you go. Yeah, you got it. <coughs> Nobody here? Wow. Let's see. That's going to be the restaurant. They're down on the other side. Maybe, maybe closer. I don't know. Well, I could park right here. Restrooms and information. We park right here. Hey Dad, how are you feeling? I'm feeling pretty good. Fancy rental car. Uh huh. Made out. Trunk opens by itself. Uh -huh. Nice. All right. Thank you. Uh, $844. Oh, let's see. Yeah, it's $844. Going where the shade is. Yeah. Isn't that cute? I'm good, how are you? Good. Good. They don't have masks or gloves on here. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Oops. Thanks. Now put it in your pocket now. What is yours, Rocky Road? Yeah, Rocky Road Royal. It is good. Mm -hmm. It's good. That's the car I was supposed to get right there. I think this one. Enough. Is it just 30 seconds? Ten thousand dollars a night. No. Yeah. Well, there are people that are doing movie stars. Atlanta, Georgia. So this is the hotel. We have a bedroom, a TV, a closet. And out here we have a bathroom. 
Mookie. <laughs> a nice living room here. Grandpa. <laughs> and a kitchen. And a fireplace. <laughs> Alright, we just got into Tennessee. How's everyone feeling? Hey, looking good. for a rest stop. <laughs> looking for a rest stop. <laughs> Doing good. Lots of construction. <laughs> Heading to Chattanooga. Chattanooga. Knoxville straight ahead. Straight ahead for Knoxville. No Chickamauga Dam. Who wants to go to Chickamauga Dam? Not me. Mm -hmm. We can pee him. We can pee off the side. Yeah. <laughs> We're looking for Thornhill. <laughs> yes. Sneedville. How about that at the other side? Sneedville. Sneedville, 31. We're going to Sneedville. I wonder what your mom is thinking. Yeah, that's what I said. I don't know, but I brought an extra pair of drawers. <laughs> <laughs> Here you go, Joe. Look, look out your side. You may be able to get a good shot. Because you're going to be on that side now. Yeah. On the right track, because I would hate to redo it. <laughs> Today. There's only 131. It's a short road. Okay. Seems long to me. <laughs> <laughs> What's this one? Oh, a little restaurant. Right? Free coffee, grand opening, all right. <laughs> <laughs> a little store. Home of Jimmy Buffett? Oh, yeah. yeah. All right, we're going to the farmhouse. Hallelujah. <laughs> Here we go. I don't think so. Hey, I don't like that little drop there. It's on top of the mountain. <laughs> oh, it's way up there. Holy no. Toledo. It wasn't as close as I thought it was. Right up, up out there. You could keep driving. Look at that view. Did she say we're there? No. no. Jeez. Wow. Almost to the farmhouse. In 800 feet, your destination will be on the right. Wasn't as close feet. as I thought. Oh, I think, is that it down there? I think that's it down there. That's oh, that's on the left. Oh, never mind, that's not it. On the right. Look at the road, we gotta go up. There it is. That's where we're staying. Take a picture of your mama. <laughs> oh, look, that's the thing. All right, so we got here a while ago, but it was so nice I forgot to record. So this is the farmhouse. It's really nice inside. It's really nice. And the view is really good, too. I could live here. I want to live here. We have a nice little place to sit right here, look at the view. Wow. I definitely want to live somewhere like here. This is so much better than Florida. So as you go to the house, we see we have a little dog here and a cat. And this other little cat here. Here we go.
Uh, hi, everybody. <laughs> Hello there. <laughs> 11 months. Yeah. You like the living room? Yes. Your mama's calling you. Oh. Yeah. Hey, Mama. This is the living room. This is the dining room. And in here we have the kitchen. Say hi, Mom. Hey. We're making our avocado toast. Come try it. Here we have the laundry room. And, oh, well, it's locked from the inside. But there's two ways to get in. This is the bathroom. All right, so this is the bathroom. Hi, Moogie. <laughs> 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 this is Mookie's room. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> the biggest one in the house. Yes. <laughs> Alright. This is upstairs. We got some Christmas trees here. A telephone. Over here, we have a nice little porch. You can sit here, have some tea, look at the view. This is one of the bedrooms. Very comfy bed. I tried it out. A heater, thingy, majigger, closet, bunch of decorations, a horse you can ride on. Very nice room. Over here we have another room with a TV. This is the only bedroom with a TV. Got a nice bed, closet, you know, a nice cozy room. This is kind of like a, a second living room, I guess, or like a, a reading room. I don't know. With another bathroom. Very nice. Shower right here. This is the last bedroom. It has three beds. So everyone can get their own bed in this house. And yeah, that's pretty much the farmhouse. It's really nice, especially outside. Outside is my favorite part. Oh, payback time? Mm hmm. <laughs> oh, that's so annoying. <laughs> How annoying is that? Me recording you? How are you enjoying the trip, Mom? I love it. This is for Uncle Ron to put a movie together of our trip. Is he really? Yeah. Oh, it's been amazing. My son's getting married and I couldn't be happier. Mm. I love Jose very much. I love all my children. Love you, Jose. Getting ready for Jose's wedding. It's going to be at 2 o'clock. It's like 1.30 now. Thing to say to the camera, Dad? Yes, I'm very excited today. And um, I'll say he's getting married and Abby, and we're very happy for them. And the rain stopped, so we're very excited. As in all of life, what matters the most in marriage is God. I would also remind those who have been invited here today that you're not here as spectators, but as witnesses. You've been invited by this couple to witness them to be charged and give vows in the sight of God before you and before one another. You've been summoned here to hear vows, and you have a responsibility to hold them accountable to those vows. This beautiful wedding party, the guests, and the beauty of this moment is not mere formality and ceremony. Something fundamental is changing today. We gather for worship because we believe this moment of change has been ordained and designed by God. Jose and Abby, as you hear the charge that will be given today and make vows, you know that these witnesses have assembled to hold you accountable. Jose and Abby stand here today to declare to you that they believe that it is God's sovereign and providential will that they commit to one another and become one flesh. They believe that God has directed their steps in such a way to put all of you in their lives 
and to bring them to one another. They believe that they gather here today according to the will of God. Family and friends, we assemble here because of our great love for Jose and Abby in the presence of God to witness the uniting of this couple in the holy institution of marriage. I ask, who gives this woman to be married to this man? Her mother and I. <laughs> Let us pray together. Lord, we thank you that you have brought us here to this moment on this day. We love Jose and Abby, and we are excited about you bringing them together. And we pray that this covenantal commitment being made today would be one that would honor you and glorify you for their lifetime. May the gospel be clear in this marriage, and may this marriage preach the glorious reality of Christ and the church to anyone who is willing to watch. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Perhaps the most familiar verse in the entire Bible is this. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. For God so loved, he gave. For God so loved, he self-sacrificed. For God so loved, there was a bloody cross on behalf of guilty sinners. The Bible describes the son as the groom and the church is described as his bride. The son expresses his love for his bride in self-sacrifice, absolute self-sacrifice, to the uttermost, love that knows no end, love that goes to a cross and is resurrected. The church expresses her love to the one that gives everything for her. The bride joyfully submits to her loving head, acknowledging him as her leader and following gladly where he leads. This is the marriage to which all other marriages are to point, and this is the marriage to which your marriage is to point. Jose, I want to say to you today, this is your bride. As her father walked away moments ago, it was no mere formality, and it wasn't just simply symbolic. Something is changing. You have a new responsibility, a responsibility you've never had before. This is your bride. You're to love her to the point of absolute self-sacrifice. Your love is to know no end. You're her provider and her protector. Her father has taken care of her and brought her to this point. But he should be able to lay his head on his pillow each night knowing that you will do whatever it takes protect Abby and provide for Abby for the rest of your life. And she should be able to sleep with a sense of peace that God has given her a provider and a protector. And Abby, I want to say to you, this is your husband. You are to joyfully submit to him and to trust him and to follow his leadership. You're making a choice today that Jose will be your provider and your protector. And you will love him through supporting him and caring for him and being the compliment that God has provided him. I would remind you as well today, when your father walked away, that something really changed. As you look at one another, Jose, this is your bride. Abby, this is your husband. Hear and heed the words of God in Ephesians chapter 5. Wives, submit to your own husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, as also Christ is the head of the church. And he is the Savior of body. Therefore, just as the church is subject to Christ, so let wives be to their own husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives, just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for, for her, that he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of water by the word, that he might present her to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that she should be holy and without blemish. So husbands ought to love their own wives as their own bodies. For he who loves his wife loves himself. For no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes it and cherishes it, just as the Lord does the church. And we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. The marriage between a man and a woman is to be a living testimony of the relationship between the Lord Jesus Christ and his chosen people, his bride, whom he purchased with his own blood. The bride of Christ was specifically chosen by the Father from sinful humanity for the Son. His love for her knows no end. Therefore, to be unfaithful to this marriage covenant will not only bring shame upon you personally and lead to negative consequences. To be unfaithful to this marriage covenant will be to lie to the world about Christ and His church. It would be for you to say that Christ is not a faithful husband 
does not keep his promises and that the church does not trust Christ. Abby, you are beautifully adorned as a bride today. May it remind you of the reality that the Lord Jesus Christ has closed his church. He's adorned her in rows of righteousness. The bride of Christ has nothing but filthy rags, but she is now clothed forever with the glorious robes of righteousness. Isaiah and Abby, your marriage exists because of the gospel, and it must be built upon the gospel. Your marriage is not to say to the world, look at a perfect couple, but your marriage is to say to the world, look at two people who are sinners and needy of grace and have found that grace in Jesus Christ. He is our Lord and He is our Savior. He is our only hope now and forever. He is the great promise keeper and His promises will all be fulfilled. Every promise in Jesus Christ is yes and amen. When you deal with one another in all of your weaknesses and your struggles, may you remember that you yourself are needy of grace and may you show grace to one another. The difficulties you will face in marriage are no reason to walk away. The more difficult it gets, the more opportunity you have to show love. Remember that Christ died for the ungodly and the commitment that you make here today is regardless of whether the other person holds up to their end of the commitment. Jose and Abby, be content with what you have. I want you to know through all your weaknesses, Jesus Christ is perfectly content with you. Be content with one another. Do not forsake one another. The Lord Jesus Christ will never forsake you. Finally, let me remind you that in choosing each other, you are choosing never to pursue any other. You are uniquely God's gift to one another, to become one flesh, physically, emotionally, and spiritually. So now I want to ask you a very important question. Jose, do you totally commit yourself to Abby to be all that, uh, to be all that God and she needs you to be? And Abby, do you commit yourself to Jose to be all that God and He needs you to be? Jose, as I hold this ring before you, I want you to always be reminded of your commitment to love Abby to the uttermost. May every time you look upon this ring, you not simply see a piece of jewelry, but you see the commitment that you've made in the sight of God and these witnesses to love Abby without end. Your love for her shall never end. May this ring always remind you of that sacred commitment. You'll place that on her hand and then repeat after me. I, Jose, take you, Abby. I, Jose, take you, Abby. As my lawfully and spiritually wedded wife. As my lawfully and spiritually wedded wife. I promise to forsake all others and cleave only to you. I promise to forsake all others and cleave only unto you. I promise to love, honor, and comfort. I promise to love, honor, and comfort. And spiritually build you up. And spiritually build you up. I take you from this day forward. I take you from this day forward. For better or for worse. For better or for worse. In riches and in poverty. In riches and poverty. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. Till death do us part. Death do us part. I promise to pray for you. I promise to pray for you. And to forgive you. And to forgive you. As God has forgiven me. As God has forgiven me. I promise to give myself to be your spiritual leader. I promise to give myself to be your spiritual leader. And therefore I receive you as God's lovely gift to me. And therefore I receive you as God's gift to me. Abby, I pray that this ring would always be a reminder of you of your love for Jose. <laughs> is to be second only to your love for Jesus Christ. May you see this ring and remember that you have committed today to trust Jose as your provider and for one who cares for you. I pray that you also be reminded of the one uh, of the ways that you love and trust Jesus by loving and trusting Jose. You place the ring on his finger. Repeat after me. I, Abby, take you, Jose. As my lawfully and spiritually wedded husband. As my lawfully and spiritually wedded husband. I promise to forsake all others and cleave only to you. I promise to forsake all others and cleave only to you. I promise to love, honor, and comfort. I promise to love, honor, and comfort. And spiritually build you up. And spiritually build you up. I take you from this day forward. I take you from this day forward. For better or for worse. For better or for worse. In riches and in poverty. In riches and in poverty. In sickness and health. In sickness and health. Till death do us part. Till death do us part. I promise to pray for you. I promise to pray for you. To seek to understand you. To seek to understand you. And to 
forgive you as God has forgiven me. I want to be an excellent wife. I want to be an excellent wife. Whose worth is far above jewels. Whose worth is far above jewels. And therefore I receive you as God's gift to me. And therefore I receive you as God's gift to me. Based on the charge that you have received today, and based on the vows that you have taken in the sight of God and these witnesses, Jose and Abby, we rejoice with you that the two roads that have brought you here will now be one as you leave. Now by the virtue of the authority invested as me as a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ and our Lord and in the presence of God and these assembled witnesses, I pronounce you husband and wife. You have given sacred vows before each other, before us, and before God, and these vows are never to be broken. What God has joined together, let no man separate. Today, you may now kiss your bride. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it is my distinct honor to present to you for the first time, Mr. and Mrs. Jose Crop. For the very first time, Mr. and Mrs. just said beware of rock slides. <laughs> <laughs>